uh, the scripture that I've got the church motto for this year, which is rising up to the call, rising to the call. And um, I want to highlight um, a couple meanings on what it means. Okay. Obviously, uh, the scripture that we read is the Great Commission. And uh, last year, um, tried to focus on reaching out. And that was kind of responding to the question where Jesus was talking about the Good Samaritan. And um, he asked the question, you know, among the people who passed by um, the Samaritan that was hurt on the road, uh, the person who was hurt on the road, um, who would be the neighbor? Okay, so that was kind of a um, question that I wanted to respond at. And it also connects with the great commandment because the great commandment compared with the great commission is about relationship with God, loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength and all your soul. So it's loving God and also love one another, love your neighbors, love one another as you love yourself. So it is about um, a deep relationship with God also means a deep relationship with one another. So uh, you could also connect that with the great commandment. Now, this year, I want to go with the great commission. Because if we say we are Christians and we say we are a church, these two things are something that should be characterized for our church. Okay, It should be a place where People experience it, <clears throat> people looking at it, observing it from the outside and inside, new people coming in. They have to notice that our church is about loving God and loving one another. And another thing is about really serious on the Great Commission. Okay. And um, it has been about one year uh, since I've been, it, it hasn't been exactly one year, I still have two months to go, um, but uh, I've been able to um, get along or know uh, uh, the members of our church, okay? So if you say, what do you think about our members one year before compared to now? Okay, I have a different understanding now, okay? I've become to know each family's uh, um, struggles or prayer requests or, or their faith in God, how, how they uh, go along with Christ and everything. So looking at that um, and looking at our church, um, the Great Commission is something that I think is kind of neglected. Okay? I think it is kind of neglected. If we are serious in, our, uh, serious in our faith in Christ, it's not just about God and me. It's never about God and me. Well, it starts there. But it never ends there. It always overflows through caring for one another. And the extension of loving our neighbor, you know, it goes directly to the Great Commission because it's about making disciples, okay? God didn't call us, okay? God didn't call us just to be saved. That's just one part of His calling. So I want to talk about um, what it means to be called by God, okay? There are several meanings, and I just want to highlight some important aspects of what it means to be called. If we say we're a Christian, we're all called. We're all called, okay? Calling involves God's call to salvation, okay? And you have numerous scriptures on that, but I just want to highlight just one. It's from the Old Testament, Hosea. Okay, I hope it's on the screen. Hosea 11, uh, verse 1. Let's read this together, okay? Ready? When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. So this is about Hosea, and, and Hosea is representing God. God is speaking to his people who, has been, who have been very rebellious to him, and it's, it's, it's a plea to him. You know, this is our initial relationship we had. 
Remember when you were a child, when, when Israel hadn't even started yet as a nation? You know, you, was, you were a slave nation. I loved them. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Remember, Exodus is the defining moment of Israel. Okay? They, did, they lived for, uh, as slaves for about 400 years, but the defining moment of being the people of God was you know, them getting out of Egypt. So that is God's call. So when we say we are called, there's a concept where we are saved. So that's something when we say we're a Christian, we believe in Christ, and we are saved. We, we are no longer under the um, influence of sin, okay, theoretically, under the influence of sin, but now we are freed from that bondage. We are freed, and that's the meaning of salvation. Of course, after salvation, you now enter into a spiritual warfare where Satan and the evil uh, powers of the world are trying to pull us back, back into being, going back to Egypt, back into bondage of sin. Um, but we have the Holy Spirit. We have Jesus, the blood of Jesus that says, no, you're freed. Okay? So now we are going, entering into a mind game and also a spiritual game, and we have to overcome that. Okay? That's, that's what it means to be first saved, and then next we need the Holy Spirit to live a victorious life. Anyway, we are called to be saved. So when we say we are a Christian, the first concept that we have to have is we are all called by God, okay? We are all called by God. And we are called to uh, be saved. And that means we are giving, we are been given a new identity in Christ, okay? Not a slave identity, but a new identity identity in Christ. And you have that in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Okay? 5.17. Let's read that together. Ready? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The thing is, um, it's one thing to know that we are a new creation. It's another thing to actually be a new creation, okay? Experiencing that in our everyday um, life. So we are called to salvation, but, but we are also called to a new identity in Christ, okay? So have that concept in mind. Also, calling involves a new destiny and a new purpose, Okay, calling involves a new destiny and a new purpose. So if we are called in Christ, if we are saved, if we are given a new identity, that automatically means we are given a new purpose and a destiny. So um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's read this together. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, when you were called. Okay, the, the latter called, when you were called means when you were saved, when we were given a new identity in Christ, you were also called to one hope. So there is something that's out there in the future. Okay, there's a new destiny. There is a new um, purpose for us. So we, as a Christian, we have to realize that. Okay, this is an example. Okay, this um, time for the winter break, Okay, uh, I went with my family to see um, Star Wars, the episode seven. Okay, um, uh, that was very interesting uh, because I know all the episodes from one to six, right? Um, but my kids don't know it, so this break it was a time of having them go through all of the series. <laughs> I went through all the series, okay? The reason I wanted to do that because I want to talk to them about that. Okay, this guy was, oh, he's so young, <laughs> you know, going back to all those um, Star Wars episodes again. And now, um, guess what my son is doing now? He's always lightsaber, <laughs> the dark force, okay? 
Dad, you be Darth Vader. Okay. <laughs> He's all, he wants to be Luke Skywalker. So this is, this is kind of um, entering into the calling. Okay? You didn't know. You didn't have this worldview. You didn't know that there was um, a far, far away galaxy over there. There was something going on. You didn't know that. You didn't know that there was the force. You didn't know that it could do something. You didn't know that it was a dark side. There was a light side. You didn't know that. But now he knows. And he knows which part he wants to be in. Okay, he wants to be on not the dark side, but the winning side, the good side. Okay? So um, every day, you know, he wants to play with the lightsaber. He wants me to be the bad guy always. Um, he always wants to win. And, and I, when I say, Timothy, don't play anymore. This is time. Okay, give me those lightsabers, okay? And then now he plays with his fingers. So, okay. <laughs> oh, he can do it. So this is a constant um, thinking of that. And that's what's supposed to happen when you say we are called in Christ. When we say we enter into a new identity, you got to know what's happening. You got to know where we're going. That has to be our everyday thought at the moment, okay? That's what calling means. So now we're entering into another concept of calling, and that is um, the calling to do something, okay? Calling involves a a life, the call to service, okay? When we are called, we are saved, yes. We're given a new identity. We are entering into a new worldview where God is the creator. We are saved. We're going somewhere. The world is going to an end. Christ has come to judge, and, and the kingdom is being established in this world. The church is there to show what it means to live as a, the kingdom of the people of the kingdom of God. And, and the church is there to show to the world what it means to be saved, what it means to be called, what it means to be given a new identity. The church is there. Okay? So church should have the characteristics of God. The people who don't believe should see that in the people who are worshiping our Lord, who are giving a new calling, a new identity, who are saved. You know, they want to see what it means to live as a Christian. And the only way people can see that is when we serve, not ourselves, not among our members, but actually going out into the world where people have no idea, they haven't seen Star Wars or anything, they want to see a glimpse of what it means to be living in the kingdom of God. And that is calling, called to be in active service. Okay? So this is what I want to highlight today. Okay, this is what I mean when I say rising to the call. Okay? We are called to faith, salvation, and service to God, okay? Uh, um, we are called to, um, to, to serve the Lord, okay? And many callings in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the calling of Abraham, Moses, Samuel, all the callings, okay? They were called to a specific service, the Bible says, now we are called, we are called for um, doing, doing God things, okay? So each person, when we are called, we are also automatically called to uh, respond to his calling. So I want to go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Okay, Ephesians um, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, okay? Okay, I think it's not on the screen. I'll just um, read to you. As a prisoner for the Lord, okay, this is Paul speaking when he was actually in jail, okay? As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling, okay? Uh, you have received, Okay? So this is a, a call to live out what it means to be a person who is called. And if you keep reading it, it's about 
are how the characteristics of a Christian. But it goes on to say service to the Lord. You know, some are called teachers, prophets, apostles, evangelists. You know, th- th- these are all services to for an individual or the body of Christ to serve the Lord. Okay. So today, if you look in your um, church bulletins, you know, we do have. Um, in Korean, we call it 재직 임명, right? We call it 재직 임명. It has all of the um, elders, the um, deacons, uh, 권사s, and all the pastors, and all of the people who are serving at um, committees and things like that. It's there because this is saying to us, not in just paper, superficially, not just saying, oh, this year you become this, um, you be uh, working in the education department, you be working at the praise uh, team or something like that. It's saying to us okay, that we are responding to the message of uh, the God that is saying, when we say we are called, we're actually also entering into service. And this is about serving the church. This is about serving one another. But the calling that I want to bring out here, even among the calling of service, is the call to discipleship, which I see kind of lacking here. Okay, Um, When Jesus... He finished his ministry, three-year ministry, talked with disciples, talked about the kingdom, um, healed people, um, give deliverance uh, from evil spirits. He did a lot of things. But his main goal here was to die on the cross so that through his death, you know, our sins he could deal with. And through his resurrection, he becomes the first fruit of what it means to become a new creation. So he shows us that. And he shows us through his life that by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit fills our life, we could actually overcome and become like Christ. This is not a goal that could never be achieved. This is something that Jesus wanted. And for us to do that, we have to be first delivered from sin. We have to be called to salvation, be given a new identity, and be empowered because there is no power in us that we could actually you know, overcome it. So the Holy Spirit is giving. So that's why Jesus is saying, you know what? I got to go, and the Holy Spirit has to come, and you will be happy that I'm going. The disciples didn't understand. What? We need you here. We need to do more ministry. You know, uh, things were going okay until you kind of got messed up with the religious leaders. You know, no, I have to go. I got to die. I have to go past the cross. You, got, you, you have to be uh, immersed in my blood. You have to understand that your sins are forgiven. You have to know that there is a new truth, new life given to you. Hey, you're entering into the kingdom. I'm opening the doors. The Holy Spirit is coming, and you will be empowered. And you know what? You're going to de- you, you Are you amazed at what I'm doing? You know what? You're going to do greater things than I'm doing. I'm going to do. Okay? So now we're entering into this realm where the Holy Spirit is empowering us and we're actually doing the kingdom work and God kind of wanted us to do that. So this is a very exciting um, phase in the church history and we're actually in there. The thing is, um, we have to really think serious of the Great Commission. So when everything's finished and Jesus is going back to heaven, and remember, as I go up, I'm going to come, back, come down again, okay? And then that will be like the end. It will be finished, okay? So between that, between my resurrection and my second coming, Holy Spirit is going to be with you, and I will give you this commandment. And this is it. This is the Great Commission. Jesus said, we didn't go to 18, but I'll read from that. Jesus said to them, And he said this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the statement that Jesus wanted his disciples to cling on to. 
My question is, we as Christians, we who are called to salvation, who are given salvation, we who are given a new identity in Christ, we who say we are serving in the church and we're doing a lot of things, are we responding to this call to be a true disciple of Christ? When this is like the thing that Jesus wanted his disciples to do. Okay? If you think about that, and um, um, this, this is a question that we have to answer. And that's why I'm saying ri let's rise to the call. Let's just don't sit down and listen to his call, learn about his call, talk about his call. But we have to rise up. Okay, we have to rise up to his call. And it's about discipleship. Discipleship means that we have a master to follow. We understand clearly what the master wants. Our master, our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus Christ. Disciples follow him. Discipleship means we're living out our worldview that we have learned. Our priorities are very, very straightforward. We are expressing that in our every moment of our life. When someone can define, what is our church doing? My prayer for this year is, we are followers of Christ. We represent what we believe because we are following his, his great commission of making disciples. We first become disciples and we make disciples. Do you think this command was just for pastors and evangelists or special people who are paid staff or people like that? Let me be very clear. This is for all people who have been called. This is for all Christians who have been called. They have to learn what it means to be a Jedi Knight, and they have to learn how to teach. This is our responsibility. As parents, we have the responsibility to be disciples of Christ and also disciple our children, okay? This is, this is the next generation discipleship. We also have a calling to disciple people around us who we have influence and connections. Okay, we have a duty and responsibility to reach them, talk to them about Christ, and, and, and disciple them. This is the calling that I pray will be our, our priority agenda for this year. So, I know we, we just start the first week of 2016, and wow, you're just pouring down this on us, you know, banging it down on us. No. Um, this, this is our ultimate goal. So to do that, we have to take baby steps. We have to take baby steps. First, our mind has to change. Our dialogue has to change. Just like it happened to my kids before and after Star Wars viewing. Okay? What am I thinking about? Is this the priority of the Christian faith that I truly have? Is this my main dialogue I have with my closest people around us. I'm just amazed at um, Legacy Church. Um, some of their leadership uh, groups, when they talk about, their main dialogue is, how are we going to reach out to those people? Who are we going to reach out to? You know, this member has this kind of concerns. How can we help that person Okay, um, uh, you really grow in Christ. Oh. 
how can we make our church environment, our values, the priority where, where we can say to uh, our neighbors, anyone can come. We welcome you. If you're hurt, if you're doing drugs, we don't care. Just come. You know, our, our church has the value that's saying, you know, we want to make anyone who just comes here one time to be sure that there is a group of people who say that they say we follow Christ and we care for you. We just want to minister to you. Okay. That's, that's, that was their um, leadership group dialogue and theme that um, Pastor Todd was trying to share with me. You know, I'm trying to bring out what our values should be. I was kind of um, you know, challenged when our group leaders gather, what are our main subject of dialogue? Are we trying to reach out, talk about people, pastor on? You know, I, I, I'm just thinking about this family. I, I've, been ha- I've been having a friend relationship over 10 years. I don't know how to share the gospel with him. Could you help me? Could you give me, support me ways that I could reach him? Could you pray for that person? You know, just one year, how many times do you think I had this dialogue with members of our church? As a pastor, as a follower of Christ, as a person who takes Scripture so seriously in my life, as a pastor who cares for this church, if the Great Commission is not great for us, Are we just going to label that as Great Commission? I read a book about um, discipleship and the dialogue. The pastor was trying to preach about the Great Commission, and he saw one member over there who seemed to not get it. So he's saying, okay, what did you get from today's message? What is the Great Commission? And he said, 30%. What? <laughs> He's coming from the business area and said, if you get a 10% commission, that's, you know, 10 or 20% commission, that's great. But if you get 30%, that's the great commission, I think. <laughs> that's what he's saying about that. Um, that was kind of sad. They're not talking about the same thing. Minds are all shifted away. Brothers and sisters, not only me, but Jesus has a beautiful plan for our church. And he wants to see members rise. He wants to see members rise to the call. To the call that I am saved, yes. I respond to this calling by worshiping you. Yes, you're calling. I was so unworthy, so influenced by sin, but you, you gave life to me. You exchanged it with your one and only son. You gave value in my life. Now you're giving a new purpose and meaning for me to serve you. Lord, thank you so much. What, are, what do you want, Lord? Looking at the scriptures, you're saying love God, love your neighbors, and, and make disciples. Go to the 12, Galilean, fishermen, ex-tax collector, whatever. They say he's giving a global vision. Go to all nations. What? (laughs) God has a plan, a grand plan that our understanding can never, never understand fully. But he did it. Even like all over the world, the gospel is going. It's working. It's happening. People are responding. The calling is actually there. We see people filled with joy that they're, they are being used by God. Brothers and sisters, this is the great commission. And I pray that it will be a priority for us as an individual, for families, and as a church. I've just opened it, opened it up. 
and through the weeks, um, this will be my main um, concern. And um, small groups that's going to be opened up this year, um, training that's going to be opened up this year, is going to all focus on um, how we are going to respond to our calling. Um, this year, one of my resolutions is to um, start doing um, QT, quiet time, um, with all of my family, okay? I think Timothy, you know, he could start to dialogue now. And when the, um, we're doing, like, living life, um, and it's great that they have an English version for the elementary now. So we have the same text. And um, we're, we're starting. Yesterday, talked about um, Psalm 62, which I preached um, at the um, Saturday early morning prayer. And so she was there, but, you know, she, of course, she always says, your Korean sermon is so long and boring, I don't understand it. Uh, but I, I had her to read um, the um, Psalm 62, and, you know, she was just trying to just answer the good answers, you know. You know, what do you think about this? Oh, that means that. And then um, rely on God. Well, what's this about? I said, rely on God. You got it from the title. Okay, <laughs> rely on God. Um, so what does it mean? Well, it's not in the text. <laughs> so I'm saying, well, meditation is about not getting the right answers, but trying to put that answer into your life experiencing that, okay? So, you know, we had a conversation. It was like, it felt like Star Wars. I could talk with her about Star Wars. <laughs> uh, now, I could talk about um, um, Psalm 62 now. Uh, she knows about the David story. She knows about the Absalom revolt. So I, I could kind of connect how this goes with that. And now I wanted her to shift that to our personal experience. Um, well, we do quiet time not to answer, not to give right answers, but to see if we could actually live that out and where we could apply that in our life. Okay? Because sometimes, you know, even though we know the right answer, like verse 1 and 2 in Psalms 62, you also have three, four, and five where, where everything is not going that way. And then uh, the final verse also repeats uh, verse one and two, which is saying, after this experience, yeah, yeah, it's truly, it's truly true. You could only rely on God. He is my salvation. He's my rock. He's my refuge. So, you know, that's what's growing in Christ all about. We start with the answers, and we figure out what's not connecting with our real world. We try to apply that. We need the Holy Spirit. We need our community to work that through. And then when you come back to the answer, it's not an abstract answer. It becomes a personal answer a personal confession of faith that, yes, this is true. So I'm trying to work that out. And along with that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to work it out with our community too. Let's be um, honest to what we truly believe. Let's try to respond and try to figure out what it means when we say we we'll believe what we believe. And when 2016 finishes up, I hope that some of our confessions will be, yes, we responded to your call, and look what you have done, Lord. We praise you. And it is true. Yes, your word is so true. And I hope that's how we finish up this year, as we start up this year. Okay? I invite all of you to pray with